The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 6th, the fan ah, it's not Fantastic Friday, it's Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. For that, send it out to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Got a slightly mixed bag out there. The mix is coming for the trannies, which are up 29 points. Otherwise, the other U.S. indices to the downside. Dow's off 85, S&P down 7, NASDAQ 113, the Russell's off about 3, gold's off 9, silver down 9 cents, slight sweet crude is off 6 pennies, natural gas is off 6 pennies, and a 30-year treasure is up 6 ticks out there. Trading out at 134.08. Lead the charge. Dollar-wise, the upside, you got... Uh, Fox Factory Holdings up five bucks. You've got uh, El Nylum Pharmaceuticals up five bucks, two and a half percent. United Rentals five bucks, one and a half percent. Restoration Hardware up about five bucks or two percent. Leading the charge, the downside Mercado Libre off 16 bucks, one and a quarter percent. Costco about 14 bucks, nearly three percent. Fabrinet off $11 or 10%. Alta Beauty down nearly 2%. That's a little bit less than 10 bucks. And HubSpot down seven bucks. That's about one and seven tenths percent. But let's start with uh, let's start with what I can share with you. Uh, that seems relatively certain, at least from a technical standpoint, what the uh, equity markets are doing, at least what the message is. Uh, we're going to start with these four equity future contracts. Of the four, one of these contracts is giving a very clear signal. And that contract is the ES Mini. Why is that so clear? Well, first, we have a completed A to B equals CD pattern. I'll just draw in the A to B point here. We'll just move that over. So there's A to B. And then we're just simply going to move the uh, this line over to the lowest low after that high was formed. You can see we made a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. And then as we did that, we got a key reversal bar. Key reversal bar, price exceeded the prior high, the prior low, and closed in the opposite direction. And then yesterday, we have a new profile that formed. That new profile is resistance at 41.52 and support at 40.76. Because we have a confirmed pattern, what odds favor when we get that is that price will pull back and test that oscillator and change line. Now, odds favor increase when we have a color change in that line. The color change tells us the price oscillator is going between, is going above and below zero. In this case here, it went above zero, which can be a bullish message. It's a bullish message after we get the first successful test, or the second successful test, that is, or any kind of test out there. So we have a bottom of a new profile, 4076, the oscillator and change line, really right at that same area. Logically, that's what we should be expecting. Now, I'm not saying that happens today. I'm not saying it happens on Monday or Sunday when we when we open back up. But the clearest message of these four is coming from the ES Mini. And that says we should get down to that 4076 level and test that area of support. 
In the case of the NQ out here, it's not as clear. In fact, the NQ does have a new profile. Price looks like it's just above the top of that profile. In fact, let me give you those numbers here. The top of the profile for the NQ is 13.062 or 13.057. The bottom and the center, the bottom's at 12.705, the center 12.777. So it's a bullish structured profile out there. If price does close below 13.062 today, then it's another indication that the it wants a retracement in this case here, I can't be so certain that it would get us back into that support level. Why? Because it's still a green oscillator change line. It says the price oscillator is still above zero. Bullish conditions, but its momentum has uh, waned out here. So again, that takes me back to the ES Mini as providing the clearest signal. In the case of the Dow Equity Future Contract, it has an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern that has not been confirmed. And we're just trading inside of Monday's bar. The Dow is the strong one at this point in time. It's not the one to be shorted. If you are going to short, it has been strong, and it doesn't have a completed top out there. The Russell 2000 is just a consolidation with inside profile, support and resistance. Right now, price is testing a very key level. That's that red oscillator and change line. If price were to close below it, and at the end of the day, and the oscillator and change line right now is printing out, well, I'm going to do this here. It's printing out at... 1760.20. So use that as a guideline. Uh, but if price does close below that, that would then tell us that price should make its way down to the 1722 level, the bottom of that daily profile. So overall, in summary here, we don't have a top in the Dow. We don't really have a top. We don't, not really. We don't have a top in the NQ. We only do in the ES Mini. And then the Russell, it's just a consolidation out there. So we got a hodgepodge. But I think we take a look at if the NQ closed below the top of its profile, and the ES Mini closes lower. It just odds favor that we get back to that 4076 level. So don't want to belabor, belabor, belabor that any further. Wow. Uh, let's just simply take a look at what market breadth is doing here. So in the case of market breadth right now, this is the S&P 500. We're just negative for the 60 and the 240. We take a look at the daily time frame. We have 160 instruments above profile, 107 below. So the best situation here would, in fact, be that price pulls back to 2076, and at the same time, market breadth remains bullish. Does it have to remain bullish? No, but that would be the nice setup for the next buy point out here because the markets really should rally into the early part of May. Uh, you do have troubles here in the 60 and the 240-minute time frame chart. They are negative, meaning you have more instruments trading below profile. For example, 216 on the 240-minute uh, chart and only 153 above. So we've got some, it's going to be a choppy market. There's no doubt about that because we've got bullish uh, profile, uh, uh, well, bullish market breadth daily, weekly, and it's the short-term ones that are showing us the negative or bearish market breadth. Inside the NASDAQ 100, same exact pattern on its daily time frame, 30 above, 19 below so i think maybe the nq could take its p's and q's from the es mini that's if it gets back to that 4076 level out there on an even shorter term time frame just as we go into the break here this will be the 30 minute time frame this is going to be the uh nasdaq 100 which is bullish right now 48 above 19 below we haven't looked at the 30 minute charts out there but that suggests the 30 minutes to rally and let's finish it off by take a look at the s p 500 what kind of market breadth does it have for a 30 minute time frame we'll get this populated there's going to be come on come on 148 above and 162 below so again we've just got uh mick well, it's not such a mixed bag out here jamie it's mixed messages across the board right short-term bearish inside the nq short-term bullish inside the yes mini i can tell you all last week and even the beginning of this week we never had that condition it was the nq that was leading the charge steve Rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first request out here. First request coming in from Dennis from West Palm Beach. Wants to take a look at Microsoft. You know what? Dennis is actually interested in the short-term time frames. So that's where I put it. I know I did something here. So with regard to short-term time frames, I know we'll take a look at all of them. This goes from all the way down to the, from the from time frames, from the monthly down to a 15-minute chart. So with regard to a 15-minute chart, and I'll give you all of them. With regard to Microsoft, here's what we know about a 15-minute time frame chart. It's got a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Uh, but price is still below the uh, profile levels out here. So your resistance area is going to be 284.90. Your support is at 283.31, all the way down to the low at uh, 282.03. So that's Microsoft on a 15-minute basis. You got that resistance up that profile. We take a look at Microsoft on a 30-minute time frame. What do we see? We see that price had a Rhodes momentum indicator. Just trying to expand this out, make it easier for each of you to read out there. There we go. Let's just move this. Yeah, That's about as good as I can get. So this has a Rhodes momentum indicator top, negates its TD9 count bottom, and gets all the way down to its breakout area at 282.02. Price is struggling at its oscillator and change line. Um, you really need to close above. I'd say what you really need to do is you've really got to close above 284.68 today to suggest that this wants to rally up to the 286 or 287 level, 286.09 or 287.28. So that's the message of the 30-minute time frame charts out here. Let's go see what the 65-minute time frame chart has to offer us. Here we can see a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Was it confirmed? Let me just take a quick peek here. And it was. So you've got a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Price dealing with profile support. That's at the area of about two. 83.49, so we're just above it right now. And if uh, if, if price fails to uh, stay above that in a 65 minute time frame, we're looking at 281.48 out here. Uh, what other information can we glean from these charts? 130 minute chart is saying I've got support at about 
So overall, what these four time frame charts show us, even if there are bottom signals out here, is prices struggling to deal with resistance levels. So make it easy, 285, just make that the number, 285. If price can close above that, we should rally further. Otherwise, it's just counter trend moves up in that area. Now, on a daily time frame, you have a confirmed TD9 count top. If price is below its oscillator and change line. It's green, so it says, it says hey, maybe we do more retracement. Well, there is no profile that also formed out here. So in the case of Microsoft, more likely than not, Dennis, and I know this is not your short-term request out here, but more likely than not, price is on its way down to the 279.41 level, and that is the bottom of the uh, current profile out there. And that's really a supporting what we just looked at uh, with regard to the intraday charts out there. So I do hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for taking the time to uh, put in a request. And uh, happy holidays uh, to you. The next request is uh, also inside the Tiger's Den. It's coming from uh, John, uh, John C. John wants to take a look at Micron out here. So we take a look at Micron, John. Yesterday he had a nice bullish hammer candle at his bullish structure daily profile. Not that that completed a pattern, which it didn't, but price did get back to support and it held. So it does look like it's bottom. Now what the price should do is go target its green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed about 59.18. John C., if price were to close above that green line, it's telling you wants to make a move up to 61.78. So you got yourself a good old-fashioned consolidation right now is what I would call it with inside profile support and resistance. Again, 56.65 up to 61.78. On a weekly time frame chart, you like what it did this week, so to speak, and that price pulled back, tested and rejected that red oscillator and change line. Here you've really got a consolidation. And that consolidation, we would say, is between 65.12 all the way down to about 48.50 or so. On a monthly time frame, Micron uh, struggling to clear its green oscillator and change line 63.23. So it just doesn't have its momentum. Now, on a 30-minute time frame, John, I don't know what time frames you trade or if, even if you do trade for Micron, but you did confirm a TD9 count top on a 30-minute basis. This suggests that Micron should at least pull back to support. And that would be at about the 5709 level out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the charts here for Micron. Um, what else does it have? So on the daily base, so how, how do we read this? Well, it'll be interesting because the daily, you know, it, it held support yesterday. So what you want to really take a look at is what's the high of the day so far. And if price is able to close above 58.50. If it closed about 58.50, then at least for the day, it should rally further. Now, 59.20 is another resistance level on that 30-minute chart out there. So that would be the next battle that you'd have to watch. And if price could close above that, you're looking at 61.22. So that's Micron with regard to the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, the daily and the weekly out there. So John C., I hope that provided the information you were looking for. If not, please go ahead and write back to me, and we will be happy to get you what it is that you need. Let's see here. Uh, Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at uh, Mercado Libre. M-E-L-I is the ticker symbol. Mercado Libre trading down about $12 this morning. That's about 1% to the downside. So let's get these charts here populated. Try to get a feel for what that means. Well, it confirmed a Rogeman indicator top yesterday, Mr. Bill. We'll just expand out the uh, daily time frame chart so we can see that bearish engulfing candle. We know that price was stretched. And now what we have is we have a new profile. Price is trading below the bottom. The bottom of that profile is 12.56, 12.56.05 to be exact. We're trading below that. So what that tells us, Mr. Bill, is that price is likely going to go target the 11.01.05 area, its breakout. The reason why I hesitate just a tad is because we have to see what happens when price gets into this swing point here from March the 13th. The, green, the oscillator change on is green, so it's not a guarantee that price would get all the way back to its breakout level out here. So I'd be watching the uh, uh, pr I'd be watching price as it targets 1180.67. The volume on that trading session was 531,000 shares. If it pulls back, tests, and rejects it, well, then we probably head back up towards its highs out there. But right now, it wants to move lower. I believe that's the target is that swing point. Watch the volume as price comes in there. If it's coming in with more volume, well, that is telling you wants to go at least tackle the 1124 level, and that could easily get us then down to that 1101. Now, that's the daily time frame for Mercado Libre. What's the weekly tell us? The weekly shows right now just an inside bar. An inside bar, the way that that is, uh, the way that that is interpreted is the existing trend that is in place should continue. Well, this trend would be to the upside. 
Um, and on a monthly basis, Mercado Libre is very bullish. I say very bullish because price is above the top of its profile out there. But it's very early in the uh, month. How about on a 30-minute time frame? What do we have for Mercado Libre? What do we have for MELI? Um, we have a Rosemont Dominicator top, an A to B equals CD to the downside. And you've got a bullish engulfing candle that's trying to form right now. Watch the 1237-ish area, Mr. Bill. If price can get above that, you're looking at 1246 as a battle, 1250 as a battle, and 1254 as a, a battle on Mercado Libre. So just curious, I don't really think we have taken a look at MELI from a seasonal perspective. So since we have just a few moments here, let's try to pull this up and see if we get this from Mr. Bill. MELI. Go ahead, populate. Here we go, Mercado Libre. Let's put it back as far as we've got, which is 15 years worth of data out here. And on that 15 years worth of data, Mercado Libre should be moving higher seasonally. It doesn't seasonally top out typically over the last 15 years until about the uh, second week of uh, May out there. But it's already topped. It's got that Rosemont Dominicator signal. Not until price takes that out will it signal anything else. So Mercado Libre, my call is that it's headed back to that March 13th swing point. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome 
Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow off 87, the S&P's down 6, the NASDAQ's off about 6, the Russell is down 3, the semis are off uh, about 12 points here. If you give me just a moment, I need to check on something. Where we go? What do we have? Do we have a caller? We do. We've got a caller on the line. Let's go out to Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Thank you, Steve. Appreciate the time. You bet. Uh, Steve, I've got a couple hundred shares of XL Energy in my IRA that I've had many, many years. But I was thinking David's philosophy, sell when you can, not when you have to. Is if I was thinking of selling it here. Is It looks toppy. Is it? Would that be a good move? So That's today on X, well, well, uh, first, I'm never going to say anything is not a good move if you follow David White's advice. How about that? So that's we're going to qualify that first. Is Thank it a you. good move? Is it? A, is there a top that's in play here? So the first thing that I can share with you about the daily time frame chart is that it looks like it's on its no, way no, up no. to at it's least XEL. XEL, right? Yeah. Right. X, okay. X, X, well, you have something else up there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, should okay. I'd uh, maybe got to refresh your screen. It should show the XEL charts right now. It does now. Yes, and, sir. Okay, perfect. Okay, so on the daily time frame, uh, price is so price is above all resistance levels. So the the area of resistance really that it really crushed through yesterday was at sixty eight thirty one. It had done it technically the day before. Uh, so in uh, volume on yesterday's session was uh, four point two million shares. So we don't have any kind of a topping pattern per se, although today will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, typically, especially in a stock like this, when you get to bar number eight, it typically will go on and complete bar number nine. It doesn't mean that it's going to be higher, but you are pushing in towards a swing point. This is the swing point from January 11th. That did volume of 2.8 million shares. So that's 2.8. And yesterday, this did 4.2. So it's really indicating to us that it wants to get up to that level. But you do have a topping signal that suggests that we should see a top inside XEL between today and I would guess that would be Tuesday now. Uh, the weekly time frame chart, as we look at this, has a nice TD9 count bottom, and it took price this week right up to resistance. Why did price stall where it did today? Because it got up to that 71.67 TD9 count breakdown level. Now, what you and I don't know is whether or not price can take that out, but it does help us to understand why price stopped where it did. And then when we look at the monthly time frame chart, what we have is a consolidation with inside its profiles. It's been consolidating with inside the profiles for quite some time. When I say quite some time, we we'll go back to about the April of 2021 time frame. And it's now April of 2023. So you just got a good old-fashioned consolidation. If you can close above the screen oscillator and change line, which is pretty much where we're printing right now at 7089, it would tell us that it wants to move to 7452. So how I would how I would answer your question? is so are you considering if you said you've held it for a long time yeah I've, so i bought it back when it was 16 many years ago yeah so are you considering 16, selling? 17 bucks back then so are you considering selling and then rebuying or are you just you know, looking at maybe, getting... maybe looking at another utility well okay. looking at uh well just uh, yeah I'm, a, I'm selling and then i gotta figure out where i want to go and yeah. where i want to put the money but so I'm, uh, then i could then I can say, with regard it, to your it just instincts, seems like, you know, it, it, the thing back in I think it was around September, it really came down, and I just uh, wanted to avoid that again or something. Well, I yeah, you've got, October. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, and you've got that consolidation on that monthly chart shows the real clear consolidation out there. Couldn't bust out the lows; it's trying to bust out the highs. But your instinct is maybe you should sell or take some or all off of the yeah. table here. And I can't find a reason to I'm really worried. tell you I'm, not to. I'm more worried about the market now. This whole this whole world situation with the dollar and the, the yen and the yuan and the Chinese. There's so many things going on that um, I'm just trying to I, – I don't want to get caught. Right. Maybe I should put in a stop. Well, that's always a good thing is to have some type of stop in place. But, but your instinct said that you wanted to consider taking profits here. I can't. Even though I think this wants to get a little bit higher, it's that it's 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 really not worth the risk, so to speak. And you're you're a little bit risk averse out here. Um, and, yeah, on and this with one I am, yeah. So, yeah on the IRA, you, I am, yeah. Sure, sure. You know, okay. let me take a look well, at a thirty. I, I appreciate me, what your thoughts are, and your. And I I don't know if we can get back to seventy four. Maybe I, I guess I could wait till next week and find out how it how it goes. 
Well, the 30-minute chart... I'll put it in a stop and yeah, play it that way. The, okay. Sure. The 30-minute chart, Ron, has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And here's what I would say. If, if price closes... So on a 30-minute bar, the next 30-minute bar doesn't close till noon. But if price does close below 70.94, it's signaling to you and I that it does want lower price. That lower price could take us back towards the 68.29 level. So that's another area at least for you to watch uh, throughout the okay, uh, day. 70.94, okay. Yeah, and it's had, a, it's had a heck of a rally. Look, we have had seven consecutive sessions to the upside. It hasn't done that in uh, quite some time. So it's not unusual, let's say, to see a little bit of a lower close today. Um, sure. You know, so that's the information I have for you. Uh, putting this stop makes all the sense in the world always to do that. By the way, the average, well, I don't know what the average true range is on this just yet. I thought I had that chart up, but I don't. So, uh, Ron, is there anything else I can do for you? No, thank you very much. I appreciate your information all the time. Thank you, sir. You, you bet. Have a you great have a, a wonderful day. Yep, that was Ron in Denver, Colorado. Uh, before Ron called, we were about to take a look at the SMH as one of our denners, Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den, wanted to take a look at the seasonal patterns out here. So, John, here's the seasonal pattern. Now, I can get rid of the March 2020, the COVID crash, so to speak, which I just did here, and it really doesn't have much of an impact. So I'm just going to simply turn that off. What the SMHs suggest here on a – now, this is over the last 22 years – what the SMHs suggest that we should see a bottom inside the SMHs right around April 8th. So that's just really between now and uh, Monday when we get back here. And then we ought to see a rally. Takes us up into about uh, the uh, week after that, uh, right after tax day. And then basically a sideways move. The sideways move says that this thing doesn't really get rolling to the downside, the SMHs that is, until about the June time frame. And then it goes on, makes that bottom into October. If we take a look at April here, it's still a positive performing month. Uh, typically, or at least historically, over 22 years. If we shorten this, we could shorten it to 10 years as an example. So over a 10-year period of time, let me now get rid of that. Uh, well, okay, so that's without the March 2020. Now, this suggests that the SMH, at least over the last 10 years, have moved lower into about the uh, third, second week of uh, May out there, and then a rally into uh, June. So that's a 10-year look at this, John. A 15-year look. Here's your 15-year look. Uh, and then uh, finally, what's transpired over the last five years, but without 2020, and that's your view. Now, if we take a look at the SMHs just simply for signals, now that we've taken a look at its seasonal uh, set of charts out here, what the daily time frame shows us is a nice Roachman indicator top with price finding support at the bottom of that profile. Now, as price was hitting the bottom of the profile out here, and this kind of goes to a question that John also had about the NQ. He asked me to take a look at the NQ this morning uh, based on a comment that uh, uh, that I had said earlier about it looked like the NQ could form a, uh, a bottom. This was a couple days ago. But here in the SMH, this is an easier call uh, for us, John. And then we'll go take a look at the NQ charts as well. But price is getting back at support. So as price is getting back to a support level, my question is what's going on on the intraday time period? If there's going to be a, at least a change in trend or a supported rally, we should see bottoms. Well, it turns out, if you look at a 15-minute chart, there's a Roach Mentum indicator signal. The same on a 30-minute time frame chart. The 130-minute chart has a, uh, T, a TD9 count bottom that is going to complete at uh, about 12 noon. It says 11.40, so that's another two minutes out here. What do I have on the 195? What do we have? We don't have anything there. So we have several bottoming signals out here. And this suggests that the SMH should at least rally, perhaps get up to the uh, 258.43 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back, folks. Dow's off 81. S&P is basically flat. Nasdaq 100 up for 31 right now. Russell's down two. Semis are up two. Back on the semis here. Uh, we can see that yesterday was day number three of consecutive uh, lower closes out here. Uh, we've had the last two times uh, after day three, we've seen a uh, rally. So not, uh, not not surprised. Now, this could be day number four. It still has to get above yesterday's close out there. But it really does suggest the rally that we see here. It makes all the sense in the world now. If we take a look at what's likely going to occur out here, as I mentioned about the 254, 255 level, well, you can see that all over the place at the 30-minute uh, top of its profile, 254. 254 is the asset and change on a 65-minute chart. 255 is the uh, top of the uh, profile on 130 minute, which is forming that is completing that TD9 count pattern. So it really does look like to me that that's where price wants to move to before it then resumes its move lower. Well, how'd you come up with that, Steve-O? Well, now that I'm looking at the weekly time frame chart, this has a confirmed sell the D point pattern. And that says that we should then go test that level. Now that is at 243. If price closes below 243, then we start taking weekly profile areas into consideration, including 222.32. So I just wanted to clear up, not nothing I left wasn't clear, but I wanted to clarify the additional uh, information I see and take a look at the SMHs out there. So do hope that helps you out, John, and everybody else that is uh, trading. Uh, we have another request. It is from, um, it's from Hector and Patty. Hey, Hector. Hey, Patty. How are you doing? It says, happy Thursday, Thursday, and happy Easter. Same to both of you. It says, on your daily gold, AB equals CD up. The price movement of the CD leg is way to the right. Is, uh, is way to the right. Isn't that a sign of a, a weak move out here? So let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. Let's uh, let's use this uh, set of charts here. And if you give me a minute, let's pull up gold. GC, we're in the June contract. So let's pull that up on our screen here. And let's take a look at A to B equals. So you're talking about the A to B equals CD on the daily time frame. And I, I'm going to draw that in. I'm going to draw in the one that you're talking about. But specifically in first, I want you to be aware of the larger A to B equals CD pattern that has been confirmed and is in place right now, and that is on the weekly time frame. So I'm going to expand out the weekly chart. Now we're going to back to your daily, and this is how I'm going to answer your question. I think the longer term pattern uh, has has uh, has priority over a shorter term pattern. Let alone. This same A to B equals CD that we're looking at here, we can easily draw that in on the daily time frame. 
So at least on this one, what we have, so let's say the larger pattern here, Hector and Patty, we actually see prices on, uh, do I not have that screen up? Thank you, Mr. Bill. Oh, geez, Louise. Geez, Louise, Stevie. Get your, you know what, together. So let's uh, change the screen here, and now I got to re-say it again. So here's, the, uh, here's your three-panel screen. What Hector is asking about is an A to B equals CD pattern that we're going to take a look at in the daily time frame. But his question is trying to understand strength or weakness. And that, that's where I'm coming from is, hey, let's look at the larger pattern that is out here. So the swing point uh, for gold was the on a weekly base was January 30th. And the volume there was around, I can't be right, it's just 22. Yeah, that's, oh, that's because I don't have that contract up. I can't measure volume. But I can tell you we're trading above 1992. We're trading above the top of its profile. This has a one-to-one -one price projection of 2156. Now, this retracement here is only 50%. And as Hector and Patty know, you do less than a 0.618 retracement, odds favor you're going to do more than a one-to-one. -one. A to B equals CD to the upside. So that says likely targeting 2156, which gets us all the way back into that swing point from back in August of 2020 out there. Um, and we'll see if that's where our price stops or if it goes on to that 2245 level out there. So the weekly time frame chart for gold, price is also on the left side, the strong side, that shallow retracement out there, Hector Petty. That's the bigger, that's the bigger picture. Now let's take a look at the smaller picture. And on the smaller picture, I'm gonna simply draw in this, I'm gonna use the uh, swing point from right here. On the uh, daily time frame, that's the low from February 28th. The B point is going to be the high from March the 20th. And then we pull back for about two weeks into a low that forms on March 20th. Oh, two days. My apologies. We're looking at the daily time frame. And so what Hector is asking about is saying, hey, look, look at how price is on the right-hand side of this A to B equals CD. Isn't that really suggesting that we don't have the energy, perhaps, or it's, it's waning, and maybe we're not going to do more than the one-to-one? Um, so I, I see your point. Here's how I would. Here's how I would. Uh, here's how I would uh, communicate this to you. Which, if we take a look at, and, and you're, you're right, but I, I still go with the bigger pattern. And then we come back to the daily time frame. Price is above the top of its profile at 2013, and that's just simply a. Uh, that's it's bullish as we speak. Um, you're back below the 21, the 2031 level out there. That is the B point of this A to B equals CD. So I, I hear what you're saying. I just think you really want to incorporate the larger time frame. It's always good to look up one level, down one level, when taking a look at any kind of instrument out there. So Hector and Patty, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, happy Easter again to you and happy Thirsty Thursday. Let me see if there's anything else that has come in by email. And the answer is there is not. So uh, if, you've, if you're listening and, uh, well, you could you try to send me an email. You'd really probably best to give me a call because we've got two minutes left and a couple minutes in the other session. But I would love some requests inside the Tigers then. That would be a wonderful thing. It just give me something. Is gold up? Uh, yes. I think you were referring to the gold chart. So uh, we did change over to that. So thank you, Mr. Bill, on that. All right, so no no requests or anything. Let me take a look at Google daily chart. Okay, so let's go take a look at uh, googly one. Let me uh, switch, we'll switch panels out here. If you just give me a minute, G-O-O-G. -O -O and uh, a second for this to pop up. We change the screens. So as we take a look at uh, Google trading out right now, well, let me make sure about that. I could have a slight delay. Um, with everything that I've got going on in my system. So in the case of uh, Google, we've got uh, 107.44. Yeah, <laughs> 107.44. Gosh, crazy. So it's taking on a swing point. This swing point, I'm going to switch back to the other charts. First of all, there's no topping signals that we've got up here. We've got a rose momentum indicator signal. So nothing that I see. Uh, 108.82, John, is going to be resistance. That's on the uh, weekly time frame chart. And 112.18. But I'm going to switch back to the black background charts because I've got this delay. I've got to figure that out. This really shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be delayed. My issue, not yours. Now back to the black background charts. Here. So we're taking a look at Google and the swing point that is attacking right now. That swing point is from the trading session, which is also a bearish shooting star candle. So if price can close above it, it is 107.51. That did volume of 32 million. We're at 10 million, John, on a light trading day, on a light trading day. 
And this could easily do that 30 million shares. So now Google could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. However, what I would say is look at that resistance on the weekly chart in the 108.82 level. But this could really be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside inside of uh, Google. But that requires a close today above 107.51. So I do hope that helps you out. Uh, Bob and Spokane wanted to take a look at NAT out here. Let's uh, well, let me just put the NAT on this uh, black background screen and uh, see what pops up since we know I've got a delay on the other ones. And Nordic American tankers, right now what you've got, what you want to watch out here is, uh, Bob, is uh, you want to watch 338. 338 is the bottom of the weekly profile. Looks to me like you've got A to B equals CD to the downside on the daily time frame. That six million was taken out with eight million. Yeah, so that A to B equals CD, it's a confirmed one with regard to Nordic American tankers. That says it wants to at least give you an initial price projection at about the 329 level, 329. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to finish off the uh, show, I believe, uh, with a question at least from uh, Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas writes in and wants to take a look at Skyworks Solutions. SWKS is the uh, ticker symbol there. When we take a look at Skyworks, uh, what this did, Nicholas, is this formed a, a new profile yesterday. And uh, it, uh, it's, it closed below it, which is at 112.74. That's not really the end of the world. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly has been consolidated with inside a bullish structured weekly profile for 
two, four, six. This is week number seven. So for a couple of months out here. So I would say we just have a good old fashioned consolidation price found support where it should have, which is about the 110.39 level. We actually got down to 110.61 this week. The reason is because that's a bullish structured profile. And we've seen several tests over the last eight weeks of that area. So in Skywork Solutions, you really have this kind of narrow banded trading range between 110.39 and 117.04. I don't see anything more than that out here. Obviously, you've got a new profile, so your resistance zone is going to be between 116.29 and 118.42 zone because it's a bearish structured profile. I'm looking at my other charts off screen here, and I don't see anything else, Nicholas, to uh, assist you. So with regard to Skyworks, we're just going to stick with a consolidation between 110.39 and 117.04, and I do hope that helps to you, and thank you for your kind uh, message as well. Lastly, I guess then to close out the show, we'll just summarize that. Uh, actually, let me just go back to the other charts out here just uh, so I can, you can, you know, we're all visual. So let me take a look at this. The best signal, again, that I see out here with regard to these markets is coming from the ES Mini with regard to what it wants to do. And what it wants to do, we've got, uh, we've got a completed sell the D point pattern, new profile. With profile support at 4076, an oscillator and change line at 4076, an oscillator and change line that change colors. When you have a completed pattern odds favor, that price is going to get back there and test that. Because it's changed colors, it went from red to green. A test and rejection of that line says it's ready to move higher. You get back below it, well, then we're going to have to come reassess what is being communicated to you and I. Folks, thanks so much for being with us here. Remember, we're all off tomorrow. We'll be back with you on a marvelous Monday. Everybody have have happy holidays out there and uh, be safe and uh, enjoy your family. Take care.